Hi, and welcome Hello. to All Things Odd. Let me just make sure <laughs> Dr. Galloway is on here. I'm Dr. Phillips. And I'm Dr. Galloway. And so today what we wanted to talk about is um, going a little bit step, uh, a step further to look at some other options for hearing aids because I feel like we get questions all the time or people that come in that do their own research that say, oh, I'm here just for a cochlear implant. And they're talking fine and they're, you know, they have hearing loss and we're like, hmm, really? Are you sure it's an implant or are you sure it's some other type of implant? Or let's just start mm -hmm. by looking at your hearing test and figuring out what some of the options are. So we talked about it and we really want to talk to you and share maybe some other options for hearing aids. Not everybody is a good candidate for hearing aids, and so we wanted to go over some of the other possible implantable devices mm -hmm. that people can use um, for hearing aids, so or to hear better. So the first thing would be, um, you know, obviously when you come in, we do a hearing test, and we determine whether or not you have aidable hearing. And if you have enough hearing loss and the discrimination scores are pretty good and there's nothing else going on in the ear like drainage or um, anything like that, then we feel that hearing aids would be a great option for you. Um, there are some different options if there's certain things going on with your ear. So what I mean is um, I kind of wanted to show the anatomy of the ear, so I have this little thing here. And basically, we know when we're, I have all my tabs here because I have some different things, but um, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so this is basically the anatomy of the ear, and we are looking at um, the sound coming in through the ear canal, and then it's actually going through um, to the eardrum right here. And then it moves the middle ear bones. Sorry, my finger has to go the opposite way. <laughs> <laughs> middle ear bones here to transmit the sound and then the third bone pushes in and out of the inner ear and then you've got the cochlea which is the inner ear right here and then your semicircular canals which are the balance system and then your auditory nerve and so that's the whole hearing mechanism and so we're looking at that when we're doing a hearing test and typically if you are having a hearing loss that's what we would say normal-ish you know um, or what we call um, a sensory neural hearing loss would be kind of in the um, inner ear and into the nerve. Conductive hearing loss would be something in the ear canal like earwax or um, eardrum is burst or there's fluid behind the inner or behind the eardrum. That's called a conductive loss. Um, the difference is because a conductive loss can possibly be fixed by some type of medical intervention or surgery. Once you reach a more sensory neural hearing loss which is the inner ear or the nerve, you're looking at more of a permanent loss. And so Instead of hearing aids, you know, hearing aids could definitely be an option for you, but another option for you instead of hearing aids would be what we talked about earlier, which is called the bone anchored hearing aid or an osseo integrated device. And I've got two different ones here. Okay, um, this one is made by Cochlear and it is a bone anchored hearing aid device or Baja. The other one is made by Oticon Medical, which is the Ponto device. It's basically very, very similar and um, you know, with this type of device, when we talked about it last, we talked about single-sided deafness. Single-sided deafness means that maybe you have one ear that's really good, the other ear is like totally gone, and if we put a traditional hearing aid, the discrimination score, the clarity of your hearing when you repeated words back to us just was shocked. So if we put a regular hearing aid on that bad ear, it would just be garbled and you would hate it. And so this is a routing system for single-sided deafness. We talked about that earlier in one of our episodes. Um, and if you've missed episodes before, you know, go back. It's all loaded up on our YouTube channel, Advanced Otolaryngology and Audiology. And they're all there. So you can look up our single-sided deafness episode. And we're seeing some people come in, so I just wanted to say hello. Harold hello. is here. Good to see you. I think you're still in Nebraska. And um, our friend Amit, he is an audiologist, and he says he likes the Ponto device. So thank you for for joining in the conversation. And if you have any um, tips or anything that you want to share, Amit, Amit is located in um, California, in the LA area. And um, so he put up your practice, Amit. We just want uh, for people that are watching to see where you're at. Um, link your practice in there, please. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, so this was a single-sided deafness option. Now, that's not the only option why we would use an osseo integrated device. So that's what we wanted to talk about today because we already covered that. Um, but if you have a conductive hearing loss, a, condu a conductive hearing loss like I was showing you is maybe um, your ear doesn't stop draining. 
and it's very hard to put a hearing aid on there because all it's going to do is it's going to just um, get into the receiver or get into the hearing aid. And so for some people, we use Osseo integrated devices to work with conductive hearing losses because what happens is, and I'm hoping that I can show this as I flip through here, when we do the actual, um, well, this is a picture, I guess, of the Osseo integrated device, and I wanted to kind of show that up there too. So basically, it goes behind your ear, and it, um, you know, bypasses your outer and your middle ear, and it goes straight to the inner ear, so it delivers sound straight to the inner ear. Um, and, you know, with these Osseo integrated devices, it will bypass all of that damaged part, and it will still give you the sound that you need for a conductive hearing loss. Um, sometimes we do this for um, kiddos that maybe are in the school aged and they're having, you know, draining ears, multiple ear infections, and um, I think one time what I did was I had a Down syndrome kid, and he would just not wear. A regular hearing aid um, during the time that you know we were considering surgery or whatever and so he just didn't like the way it felt and so every time we tried to put it on he would just rip it off so what I did actually and it was kind of and it was a conductive hearing loss that he had because he had ear infections was we actually put him uh, we put a, a osteo integrated device on but we actually put him with a, a band on like this it's called a soft band and um, he didn't know <laughs> that we were actually delivering sound, but I was actually able to deliver sound past his damage, you know, draining ear infection ear just temporarily. Like he didn't have to have surgery for this. Um, and we put it on both sides. So he got, you know, sound from both sides on a soft band. Um, the other picture here is a test band. So on this side of the picture, it's a guy that, you know, if you guys came in and you wanted to try it out, we would put it on a test band. And so it kind of looks like this. Okay, so a test band looks like this, and it's something that looks very similar to like what you would, um, when we do a hearing test, we would put this bone conduction oscillator on, and then what we would do is we would program the processor and snap it on to the test band, and it looks like this. Okay, so I just snapped it on over here, and then we would put it on your head like this. So right behind, I would put the actual processor behind here, and then you could um, either plug your ear or you could kind of see how it sounds, you know, when you try this out. And so this is um, just kind of a test band that we do here, and, um, you know, if you came in for a bone anchored hearing aid evaluation, that's kind of what would happen. Um, so single-sided deafness, conductive hearing losses, um, that is called a, a, an osseo-integrated device or a bone anchored hearing aid or I guess a bone... Um, implant. You know, yeah. there are fully implantable devices that we don't do here, but um, the physician that I used to work with, they're fully implantable middle ear devices. So that's another type of implant. Um, you know, we get, con I think patients get confused when they say they're here for an implant. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're like, well, what exactly were you thinking about, you know? And because usually you don't come in and say, I'm here for a cochlear implant, you know? Yeah. So we wanted to clear this up with some of the different options to hear better. One is the bone anchored hearing aid or the osseo integrated device is what we're calling it. Um, and that is for conductive hearing loss. That is um, for a single sided deafness. And then also for people, um, you know, who just kind of want that option too, you know, that, that can't wear traditional hearing aids. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Galloway is going to talk about the cochlear implant. And I just want to catch up on some, um, some, I was going to say devices, but uh, comments here. So Harold says, yes. Yep. You're still in Nebraska. And oh, um, Dr. Gozalia says, the Ponto uses hearing aid software to make the processing smoother. Okay, so that's why he likes the Ponto. So, and he's um, at West Valley Hearing Center in yes, California. In California. wanted to go visit him. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yes, the um, Ponto device, the Otacon Med Medical Ponto device, the processor is actually... Um, fashioned and also using the technology of a hearing aid processor. So mm -hmm. that might be kind of a um, an advantage to the Otacon Medical Ponto. Also, um, what we tell our patients too, which is kind of nice, that um, is a slight advantage over the Otacon, um, the Otacon devices, is that they have a universal abutment, which means you could put whichever processor you wanted. So you could use the Otacon Medical processor, you could use the Baja processor and put it on. The third thing that kind of has um, a little bit of a benefit is that um, it, they have a tissue preservation process um, to the actual process of implanting that titanium abutment, which is right there. And I'll kind of show you what it looks like there. Okay. So anything else you please add in, Dr. Gozalia? Okay. And then Dr. Galloway is going to talk more about actual cochlear implants and what they're for. 
So the other option is a cochlear implant. And I feel like a lot of people have heard of a cochlear implant or seen one but didn't necessarily know what it was. And there's kind of some confusion. Um, so I've seen at least a couple patients that came in with mild hearing losses, moderate hearing losses, and said, I'm ready for a cochlear implant because Medicare will pay for it. So you're not immediately a candidate for a cochlear implant. Um, cochlear implants are reserved for patients who do not do well with hearing aids. So you actually have to qualify um, based on your scores with your hearing aids in order for insurance or Medicare to, to even consider paying for a cochlear implant. Um, so how an implant cochlear implant works is I've got my little model here. Um, you still wear something on the outside of your head. So you see this little black thing here. This is a model of the processor. So this is actually what gets worn on the outside of the head. And it's magnetic, so it communicates to the implant inside of your head with a magnet. Um, you can kind of see this is the implant right here, sandwiched between the skull and then the tissue here. Um, and there's actually a little tiny array of electrodes, I mean just like absolutely so tiny, that strings up into the, oh this is so hard to do, into the <laughs> cochlea right here. So the cochlea is right here, see how tiny that is? There's actually a little tiny array of electrodes that's um, coiled up like that that gets inserted into the cochlea. And so instead of you're using your body's own cells to um, send a message up to the brain, you're essentially like doing it for the ear. So the ear is damaged, it's not firing to the brain like it should be, so we're putting these electrodes in to sort of force it to work how we want it to. Um, so the signal still gets sent up to the brain and you're perceiving a sound, but it's a more electronic sound as opposed to an acoustic sound. So an example would be somebody who's worn hearing aids for 20 years and they just really feel like they're not doing well with their hearing aids, they're not understanding people, they're still having trouble. So what we would do is bring them in, test them with their hearing aids and see how well they do repeating words back. We have a whole test battery to evaluate somebody, but the short of it is we're seeing how much you can repeat back with your hearing aids on. If you're getting less than 40% or less than 50% with your hearing aids on, you're a candidate for a cochlear implant. So we have a lot of hearing aid patients that do much better than 50%. I mean, we would hope that you would do much better than 50% with your hearing aids on. But if you don't, it may be time to talk about a cochlear implant. The other thing that I think is confusing for patients is the company that we work with, Cochlear Implants, is actually called Cochlear. And they make Cochlear Implants and the Baja device that mm -hmm. she just showed you. So I think sometimes people see the company is called Cochlear and they think they have a Cochlear Implant when really that might not be the case. So that can be a little bit confusing. Um, but that is, you know, who we're looking at as candidates for a Cochlear Implant. I've got... Um, some little audiograms here. So this is for a traditional cochlear implant. Um, it's hard to see, but if your thresholds are within the yellow shaded region, that means that you're a, you could be a candidate for a cochlear implant. It would all depend on your speech scores, but you can see that's ranging from a mild to profound hearing loss. Um, in the last, I would say, five, four or five years, they've come out with something called a hybrid cochlear implant. That's like taking a hearing aid and a cochlear implant and kind of fusing them together to get the best of both worlds. But it opens up our candidacy for people, maybe they have completely normal hearing in the low pitches, but a profound or severe loss in the high pitches. So there's kind of two different types of cochlear implants. Um, and with the um, invention of the hybrid cochlear implant, people that might not have been candidates before could be candidates now. So, you know, if you feel like you have hearing loss, you have hearing aids and you're struggling, come talk to us about it. Um, not everybody is a candidate, but we try to let everybody that is possibly a candidate know, you know, hey, you could go through the evaluation because this might be an option for you. Um, implants can also be done for children. We don't really see any children with cochlear implants here. We just don't have any patients. Um, but as young as 12 months old, uh, a cochlear implant can be implanted. That would be for a child born with um, profound hearing loss bilaterally, you know, that they essentially deafness where there's no usable hearing and that's kind of our only option. But kids do wear implants as well. 
Yeah, so that's kind of a really condensed version of cochlear implant, but I think we do see a lot of confusion about mm -hmm. it that, oh, hey, Medicare pays for this. I can just get this instead of a hearing aid. That's not how it works. Mm -hmm. um, but we should be able to, if you're not a candidate for a cochlear implant, we're happy to help you find a hearing aid that you're successful with. Maybe, you know, what you are fit with elsewhere just isn't appropriate or, um, you know, maybe there's something we can do to make it better for you. So, And we usually take people through the process. So when they come in the door and they're really not too sure, we do a demo and then we have you wear a demo. And there's been some discussion in some of our audiology boards about this. And Dr. Galloway and I feel the same way about our demo units is that, you know, you might come in and maybe have a 20 year old hearing aid. And we don't feel that that is necessarily appropriate to do a test for a cochlear implant because you have to be tested in the best possible aided condition. And so mm -hmm. we we do have very powerful digital hearing aids that we can put you in. Um, but you know, don't be upset because what we like to do is we like to give you the demo for at least two to four weeks, you know, so that your brain has time to actually adjust to that different processing strategy of the hearing aid or of that manufacturer and just kind of settle and see. And then we do some testing to see how you're doing. Because for some people, all they needed was a new set of hearing aids. You know, mm -hmm. the technology that was 15 to 20 years ago um, is not the same. And so trying you out you know, taking our time doing this, we're not in a rush, but we want to make sure that we're giving you all the possible options. And we truly believe that you have to be tested in the best aided condition. And so it mm -hmm. might be when you first come in, it might be anywhere from two to four weeks that we actually decide if you're an implant candidate, um, because we really want to see if maybe all you needed was a new set of hearing. And so I wanted to throw that in too. Mm -hmm. And we have seen some patients that have come to our office, you know, they were referred for a cochlear implant um, candidacy evaluation, but then when we see their hearing test and then we see what type of hearing aids they're wearing, it just doesn't match up. Maybe it was never appropriate to begin with. Maybe their hearing changed and it's no longer appropriate, but it just doesn't make sense to put somebody in the booth and test them with hearing aids that aren't adequate. So we do make sure that we put new technology on. Um, we usually loan it out to patients. It's not like we expect you to buy a brand new pair of hearing aids just to do a one month trial period. So we can loan them to you, you know, to let you try them for a month and see how it goes. And we've had a couple patients that came into us interested in a cochlear implant and ended up just buying a new pair of hearing aids because what they had just wasn't appropriate and they were so happy once they, you know, were mm -hmm. able to get some appropriate hearing aids. So and we're seeing some great um like outcomes with hearing aids now that we might not have seen earlier, mm -hmm. even, you know, three to five years earlier. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think hearing aids have come a long way. Um, so has implantable technology, but mm -hmm. it all just depends on what's right for you. So, you know, not everybody's an implant candidate for a Baja or a cochlear implant, but it's certainly an excellent option for somebody that is a candidate. So. Yeah. Yeah, so like we said, you know, um, with anything that we're talking about here, please um, post in the comments. Please call our office for any other information. We just want to make sure that we're getting some great information out to you. Um, share it with people that you might think might benefit from some of this information. And if you've mm -hmm. missed anything, we do have a YouTube channel that we put everything up yes. on too. So you can always go back and look quickly through the actual topics and see if it's something that you can share from there. So thank you for joining us. Thank you. And we will be back next week, Wednesday at 1230, same time and all things odd. Bye.